Hi, inventors. I'm Lily, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Welcome to The Twerk Shop, a show that explicitly encourages radical diversity and inclusion by making the process of learning tech more fun, accessible, and relatable to people underrepresented in STEM. Each week, you'll come along with me as I create something fabulous using cutting edge tools and technologies. Then I'll put it through my patented twirl test to make sure that it's stage ready. That's right, we twirl with our tech because you know what they say, the family that slays together increases their socioeconomic status together. On this episode, we're going to be making an inflatable dress using a battery-powered air pump. First, I'll introduce you to the hardware and the tools that we'll be using to make the pump functional. Then I'll walk you through the fabric and design that I've chosen to make my garment out of, allowing it to change shape, doubling its volume. Everyone has heard the trope, sometimes less is more. Well, if you're like me, then the majority of the time you're doing the most. A little backstory. So imagine that you have to hike your butt up a mountain at high altitude or anywhere really to shoot some super glamorous over the top fashion footage. I love you. The weight of these garments can tend to add a lot to an already heavy load of equipment. Gear, 3D printed headpieces, bare mace, first aid kit, jug of water, and a plethora of snickety snacks. As someone who has never owned a car, that's usually how I'm rolling. So when I came across this Instructables tutorial on heat syllable fabric, inflated by basic portable pumps, I just knew that my prayers had been answered and that I would soon have an inflatable garment on this body. So just a few days later, I'd finally received the tools that I needed to make this garment take flight to ensure this project had wings. So let's get started. So this is an air pump. An air pump is a device used for pushing air. Examples include a bicycle pump, pumps that are used to aerate an aquarium, gas compressor used to power a pneumatic tool, an air horn or pipe organ, a bellows used to encourage a fire, a vacuum cleaner or a vacuum pump. Pumps and compressors are usually very similar in mechanism and basically perform the same action, but in different fluid regimes. At some point, there's a crossover in terminology, but we'll learn more about air compressors in another video where I'll be airbrushing a pair of rain boots. There's a motor inside that rapidly moves a lever up and down or left and right. And that lever is connected to a diaphragm. Imagine the bottom part of a plunger. As the lever moves one way, the diaphragm expands and pulls air in. And as the lever moves the opposite way, the diaphragm contracts, pushing air out. When the lever is motorized to push and pull in rapid succession, you get your handy dandy air pump. There are a variety of pumps that you can use, ranging in strength, which require a range of power demands. For example, your fish tank or in-home aquarium uses these larger pumps that require higher wattages. For something super light and portable, however, we'll use a pump that is powered by a low wattage, which pumps out air at a slower rate, but we'll imagine that time is our friend and just throw a time lapse on the final product. For today's project, we'll be using these tools. I'll link all of them in the description. The pump, of course. These tubes, these tube adapters, some form of sealable fabric, and of course our handy dandy battery pack. For this project, I'll be using painter's plastic tarp that I just found lying around on campus. There's a story behind this painter's plastic. I totally had a crush on one of my coworkers and I made my interest known. So he invited me to attend one of his yoga classes. So I go to this old dingy basement where a retired gym had been converted to a dance studio where they just basically threw mirrors up on the walls, basketball hoops still hanging. And I waited and I waited and he never showed up. That bitch flaked on me. Please leave a comment below if you have ever been flaked on and hopefully he sees it. So as one does, I twirled in the space for a few counts of eight and this roll of plastic was just sitting on the floor in the corner. So I opened it and I was like, oh my God, this is the perfect strength and durability for an inflatable dress. And it's not plastic bags. It was a roll of plastic, similar to a roll of fabric. So I was like, yeah, so at least I got something out of this date. 
Anyways, I already have a design in mind for the garment. I'm thinking a dress made out of petals of fabric. And if there are eight petals total, maybe two layers of four. That can make for quite a bit of volume when inflated. I'm gonna use two pumps since there'll be so many petals. First, we're gonna rig up our pumps with four different tubes each, using the adapters to get the flow from the pump out through the tubes. For this project, the higher the voltage, the faster these little levers get to pump in. So we're gonna use the six watt battery pack for the most air output while still being portable. Plug it in, plug it in. So we'll connect the battery pack to the little tabs on the bottom here. Turn it on with the little handy dandy on off switch. And as you can hear, a light mist, darling. Mm. Off. For this look, all of this will need to be kept out of view while also being accessible so that we can turn the pumps on and off. So I'm visualizing a fanny pack of sorts that will live in the front or back of the dress, but still be close enough to where the petals will live, which for this garment is around the waistline. Hi, girl. To turn these petals into a garment, we're gonna need our essentials. So you're gonna need your fabric, of course, your handy dandy scissors, your oldest leotard, a handy dandy glue gun, your dress form, and a dream. Keep your pump set up and your power supply nearby. Next, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and cut out your plastic petals to the desired shape and then hot glue all of the sides together, leaving just enough room for a tube to fit in at one of the corners closest to the waist. Next, cut the fabric out that will go over the petal shapes. It's probably best to use a stretch fabric to allow greater flexibility to the change in shape. Lastly, we'll organize the petals on a dress form, plug each petal into their respective tube, hook the tube up to its power source, and pump, pump, pump it up! Let's get started. So as you can see, the volume of this dress has increased dramatically and completely changed the silhouette. I'm super pleased. This worked quite well, but as we all know, a wearable isn't useful to me unless it's stage ready. So I'm gonna go get dressed and I'll see you on the hilltop. Turn on your post notification. <laughs>
And remember, we have unlimited creativity. This program was made possible by the BTU Lab at the University of Colorado Boulder.